Hey everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at building custom controls, specifically a scrollable tab view. This is a control I recently had to build at work with my buddy, Dan. And as you can see, when we tap along here, this is actually a scrollable tab view that I can click and drag left and right, and then click a category and have it automatically scroll and position itself so that the category is centered. So in this episode, we're gonna take a look at how to build it, some of the math and mechanics that go into it, and just really understand how building custom controls like this actually work. Let's start by taking a look at the architecture. This is how this view controller is laid out. Basically, we have a scroll tab view at the top. This is the custom control we're gonna create. Inside it, we have these views called tab views. And then we're using a protocol delegate callback from the scroll tab view to the view controller so that when someone taps one of these categories at the top, that sends a did tap delegate call back to the view controller, which then reloads the table data. And as you can see, that's what reloads the data down here. So that's sort of the high level architecture. Now, when it comes to building this, we're gonna do this in two parts. In part one, we're just gonna focus on building the scroll view tab bar at the top. Then in part two, we're gonna add this blue indicator at the bottom, and I'll show you how to animate and slide that around so it lines up nicely with your tab view category. So the construction of the scrollable tab view basically looks like this. It's a class called scrollable tab view. It extends a plain old UI view, and inside we have a scroll view and a tab of tab views. The tab of tab views are what you see in here. Each one of these is one of these tab views, and it's the scroll view that enables us to scroll backwards and forwards like this. Now the trick, of course, is how do we figure out, first of all, the scroll view takes care of the scrolling for us, but when we tap these categories, how does the scroll view know how to center and how to position a category roughly in the middle here? That's what we're gonna take a look at. That's really the big purpose of this class. First, let's take a look at the layout though. When we come in here and we set up one of these scroll views, we basically first go through an exercise in auto layout. Auto layout is what iOS uses to basically lay out and space these controls on a screen. If you wanna learn more about that, I do teach a course on that, check the show notes after. But basically by looping through all of the tabs up here and adding a tap gesture recognizer to each one of these, that's what makes these tappable like a button, we then go through an exercise in auto layout. Basically for the first index here, we say I'd like just to set up a leading anchor to uh, for this very first one over here. So it has an edge pinned to the view over here. For all these middle ones, we're gonna set up a leading and trailing anchor. So all of these are spaced to the left and the right. And finally, if it's the very last one, we just set up a leading constraint at the very end, just pinned over here. And that's what sets up the leading and trailing indicators for all of these. Then at the very bottom, we just set the leading and trailing for the scroll view itself. Then we set the top and bottom anchor for the scroll view itself. And pictorially, it all kind of looks like this. So at the end of the day, all we've set up are all of these constraints for our tab views, our scroll view, mapped to our scroll tab view itself, and these UI label views themselves, all they are, these tab views is just a label inside pinned to the outsides like this. I know it looks like a lot of constraints, but that's really the first step in this exercise is just figuring out how to lay your, your controls, get them auto layout nicely. So at least they appear well on the screen. Next, let's take a look and see how this animation actually works that enables us to tap here and shift to the middle. So when someone hits one of these tabs, that's called selecting the index. So in this line here, we're going to select index. These are zero based with zero over here. We figure out which category we've selected and then we animate or shift or ask our scroll view to animate this for us. Let's take a look and see how that works. All of that magic basically happens in this method here called animate selected tab to center. And it's basically an exercise in math and bookkeeping. Let me show you what I mean. So when we're trying to center these tabs here, we're basically trying to figure out two things. One, what's the potential offset or how far might I have to scroll when I hit one of these things? 
And two, if I go extreme left or extreme right, what's the leftmost bounds and the rightmost bounds that I don't want to scroll beyond? And then really it's just an exercise in handling those three cases, left, right, or middle. Here's what it looks like. Let's take the example of here where we are right in the middle. Say we start with something like this and we want to just hit books, say. So we're going to go a little bit to the right. First thing we need to do is we need to figure out our potential offset or how far are we from the middle here. So basically we figure out that calculation by taking our tabbed frame mid X, which is this calculation right here, which is really how far from the origin of the scroll view have we come over. In this case, let's say it's 296 pixels. And then subtract from that the half, about half of the bounds width. So remember in a scroll view, we've got these bounds, which is this orange box here. That's the viewable uh, content of our scroll view. And to get it back to the middle and calculate this distance from here to here, we simply take the mid tab X and subtract half of the bounds. That's what gives us this potential offset of about 89 pixels in this case. This is how much we want to scroll. So in order to come over here and scroll over that way, we want to scroll about 89 pixels. Then it's basically just figuring out which case we're in. Our leftmost bounds is basically on the far left over here. And we're basically saying we're never going to scroll to the left of the extreme edge here. So we call that zero. We can't go back. Our rightmost bounds is going to be the entire content size of the scroll view minus the bounds. In other words, this is the most that we could ever scroll to the right. And we never want to go beyond that. And that's how we clamp and make sure our scroll view never exceeds what's going on in the middle. Then once we do those calculations, every time someone taps this, we just figure out what case we're in. If our potential offset is less than the most uh, leftmost bounds, in other words, it's negative, we just clamp it and we say stay left. If it's greater than our extreme rightmost bounds, we just clamp it and say don't scroll beyond the right. But anything in the middle there, we actually take that offset, use it, and then programmatically tell the scroll view how far to scroll by setting its content offset. And we animate that simply by setting animated equal to true. And that's what makes this all work. Now, don't worry if this is a little overwhelming at first. I had to spend a lot of time going through the math to figure out how all this stuff worked. Let's just quickly or slowly go through a few more cases. Let's take a look at the leftmost bounds. So let's say I'm over here and I want to tab leftmost way over here. What's that going to look like? Well, to do those calculations, the potential offset, first of all, to go from here over to there, we need to go about a minus 163. And remember, that's going to be the half bounds minus the selected tab mid index. Sorry, it's going to be the selected tab index minus the half bounds. That's what gives us our minus 163. So basically, we're saying we could scroll way over this way, minus 163 points. But we actually don't want to do that. It is less than our leftmost bounds of zero. So we clamp it there. That skull isn't really death. It's just saying it's a clamp. And uh, so we don't scroll at all. When we get over to these leftmost tabs here, notice how the scroll view isn't moving. It's just sitting there. And that's perfectly fine. So we don't scroll at all. That's our leftmost bounds case. And we're done. Okay, so case two in the middle. This one we kind of already looked at. This is where we're in the middle and we actually do want to scroll over a little bit here. So in this case, what we do is we calculate that potential offset by just going the mid tab where we are in our scroll view minus the scroll view bound width. And then down here, this is where we actually want to shift the calculated amount. So you'll notice when I tap movies here, notice how it barely moves. It is animating though. It's moving about four pixels. It's moving a bit more when I go over to books, a bit more when I go over to hotel. And that's basically the middle case. That's the one where we're actually using the offset we calculate. And then the third case here, when we're actually way off on the right, this is the one where we're actually going to clamp and we're not going to animate at all. Notice how these aren't moving. This is because we're clamped on the extreme right and the exact same calculations. We figure out our potential offset. In this case, it could be something really big like 456. We know what our rightmost bounds are. We don't want to scroll more than 313. And when we compare those in that if statement, we can clamp it to the right. This is how far we want to scroll from a max point of view. And that's basically how we clamp it and stop animating when we're on the extreme right.
The thing I found most confusing about building this was just figuring out magnitudes, direction, and what was going on. And that's why I created this picture here, just to help you see what's actually happening. The key thing to scroll views and building these types of controls is remembering always where your origin is and what direction things are going. So for me, the key insight was understanding that on the extreme leftmost side here, this is the origin of the scroll view. This is zero with respect to the X axis. And everything we do is relative to that. So if you just think about calculating the middle X frame of each one of these tab views as we tap them, it makes logical sense. You can see the leftmost one here is gonna be 43 pixels to the right, 127, 211. You can see as we go up in mid X, our distance from that origin is just increasing. That makes sense. Now, when you go to calculate the potential offset, this is where you figure out, well, how far do we wanna to scroll to get back to the middle? So if we were to try to scroll games to the middle, well, we'd have to really slide it 163 points, but we don't really wanna do that. Here's where our clamps come in. We know that with the left, we don't want to sc scroll more than zero. Zero is our leftmost bounds. So in that case, we know we're in this case of left because we clamp it to zero and that is less than zero. It's only when we get to movies over here where we'll notice that we have the very first element of a slight animation from music to movies. That's a very slight move of four pixels. So now we're into this second case or the middle. That's where our potential offset is greater than zero, but still less than our rightmost clamp of 313. And that's why when we click through movies, books, and hotels, and cars, we're actually using, we're in this middle case here, and we're actually using the potential offset. And it's only when we get to shopping and restaurants that our potential offset actually exceeds the rightmost bound clip. That's when we're in the right position and that's when we clamp it and we don't animate the tabs at all. So that's how we build the scroll view tab view and handle the animations. Next, let me quickly show you what we do to add that little blue indicator. In code, it looks like this. So in our scroll view tab view, we simply add a leading and trailing indicator as optionals. This is what we're going to do set every time we ping or select one of these categories. Then it's basically just figuring out in the initial setup what to set them to. When we first start up, we set them to whatever the first selected tab is when we come in. And then we basically just animate them. So at the end of the setup, we basically set the constraints to be true so that they are set and we have our very first place where that indicator is gonna position. And then down here, when we select a tab, we have a new method called animate indicator, which takes the index that was selected, we pass it down into it, and it's basically just this code here. We first of all make sure that our leading indicator is set. These are optionals, we're just unwrapping them here. We're figuring out what tab we're actually in. And then in the scroll view, we remove the constraints for the leading and trailing indicators. So we actually remove them, and then we actually add them back in as new ones here. So we go, indicator leading constraint on the tab view leading itself. So we know what selected tab is. That's how we know which one we're setting these to. We set our indicator leading and trailing that constraints here. We activate them. And then at that point, they haven't been animated yet. And that's what this little bit down here does. We just go UIView animate with about a 0.3 second duration. And then we explicitly call auto layout asking it to render itself. And that's what makes it actually activate and update the view to these new constraints, which we've added for that indicator. And that's how the indicator works. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a taste of what it's like building some of these custom controls. And don't be discouraged by the math. It can be a lot of work, and I did find it tough initially setting this up. But once you go through the mechanics and you see what it's like, it's not actually that bad. You can absolutely build these things yourselves. You just need to grab a pen and paper, sit down, write it all out, and take small baby steps. And if you do that enough, eventually you're gonna develop the muscle memory to create great looking controls just like this. Okay, well that's all for this week. Thanks for coming everyone. I hope you found that useful. Until next time, bye-bye.